everybody, Martin the Flicking Feathers again today, and I'm tying this hot cake stimmy, Irish style stimulator, right, they're great, wet dry flies, you can fish them in big waves or you can tie them smaller, you can fish them dry, you can pull them, they really are good. <clears throat> As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anyone that wants to support the channel. Which will also enter you into the giveaways and uh, get you access to the monthly fly tying classes. Alternatively, like the video, watch all the way through, share it, comment, that all helps the channel to grow. So, I've got my hook and my vice. This is a Kamazan B170, which is like a medium wire wet fly hook. Um, and I've run on some Black Uni 8 and I've stopped just at the start of the bend. So the tail in this is chartreuse. You can use sunburst as well if you want. That's a good colour on the Cape colour scheme. You know, it's obviously sort of based on the Cape McLaren, this. Um, these stimulators, you know, just tie them sort of like your standard preferred wet fly colours that you like for where you fish. So I'm just stacking this because it's quite uneven the hair. Sometimes it comes off the patch nice and you don't need to worry, but with this patch that I've got it's It's a bit rough. I'm just gonna take a wee bit away, I've got a bit too much there. And what I like to do so it's no, just like a paintbrush, I like to just slightly knock it out of alignment. You know, I want it just close enough, no... No square. Length, about half a shank. Right, I don't want a big long tail on this. So, come in, I'll catch this off and then I'll just take my thread forward. Sort of gathering it up a wee bit. So the waste species are not in line with the... They're not interfering with what I'm looking at when I check the length. It's not bad. And then just sort of pinch it and run forward a wee bit. And then you can tighten up properly. And then I'll trim the waste. Uh, so sort of the two third mark that what the overall body is going to be. Now on the way back down I'll tie in my ribbon. I'm using silver wire. Quite a big piece here, good enough for a few flies off the spool, which reduces your waste. And it's much easier to handle as well. So I'll just take that in on the way down. Then, when I get to the back here, I'm going to just take a couple of slightly looser wraps just to sort of reduce the flare a wee bit in the deer here. And I'll take one underneath. Just to cock it slightly. For the body, I'm just using black seal for, well, I've actually I've got a wee bit of brown and a very small amount of claret in here, just so when, I mean you hardly see it, but when when it the light hits the fly, it sort of some of the wee fibres just catch the light and kind of pop. bits of deer here that I missed there. Just make 
make sure they're covered. I mean, you'd probably not see them anyway with the time the hackle's on and all that, but I'll just take care of it while I see it. Now, the first hackle I'm using is just a cheap black cock hackle. It's a Chinese. You could use a nice genetic hen if you want, but I like that wee bit extra stiffness on the sort of body hackle off as a bit of support to the the front end of the fly. And it's still soft enough that it moves. So just come in with my pliers. Just a single turn here at the because there's a wing and there's a lot of hackle going in front, I don't need to worry so much about um having like a double double turn. And as you, as four or five gets you down, and you come up with a nice tight rib. So you pivot back and get a full turn of the wire in front to lock it out the way. And I like to just tie that wire the length of the thorax, I suppose you'd call it, and bend and break it away. Now we're ready for the wing. First part, just a bit of black deer here. Not too much, less than, less than you use for the tail. Before I get that, I'll just take away that wee hackle tip. <laughs> now this this here's come off the comes off the patch nearly straight, so that's fine for me. I'm going to make it just shy of the length of the tail. I'm going to tie it back. Make sure you tie right back so there's no any space. Right, right up to that rear section and trim away the waist. I'm going to come in with a wee bit of flash. This is a Sibai, it's a sparkle here. I believe the colour's called Midnight. So there's a bit of black, and the blacks are sort of black and silver kind of mottled, and then a wee bit of pearl in there. So, catch it on my side. Just get off three strands there, fold it over. I like to just cut that off just. So it's just about the length of that black here. And if there's, if you stagger the tips, I don't know if you noticed, I, should, I, should, I said it before, I, I sort of partially close the scissor and then move it slightly so the tips are slightly different lengths. The overwing is some row deer. Now I like a, I like a light tip on this pattern, but if, if you prefer the darker stuff, go for that, it's up to yourself. I mean, usually for most flies, I would prefer the dark, but I like I like the the I just like the colour of this really more than anything else. I don't think the fish mind that much at all. So a wee bunch. It's a wee bit too uneven for me, so I can go in the stack up. As I say, I don't like it like a paintbrush, so I'll just sort of knock it slightly out of alignment. That's fine. Length, this is line it up, same as the black. Okay, 
that tied in nice and securely. Some of your waist. Looking good. Catch him a wire again. And I'll tidy everything up. Come to the front, just work back, the thread will gather everything in. And some more seal. Now I like to rib this section as well. A lot of folk don't bother. You know, they'll just dub back and tie the hackle in. Or dub backwards and um Dub backwards and then use the thread, but the wire's the wire's stronger. Right, I'm just going to go back here just to make sure I don't have a gap and to stop that, prevent that deer hair from flaring too much. I'm just going to use the dubbing you know, just to sort of flatten it back a wee bit. Make sure you've got enough. And leave yourself a bit of space. Right, I need at least a head length clear because I'm putting two hackles on this, on the 10. So I'll get the first one. I'm using furnace. Uh, a furnace or a green wool hen and I'm using two slightly different length hackles so the first one should be about the fibre should be about the same size as the body the black hackle And this is a genetic, right? It's a white and 4B. Um, usually I'm not that first on genetic hens, but just to get the a long enough five, um, hackle for the palmering, it, it helps. So, full turn at the front, and then back along the body. And then, as always, just chase that, chase that hackle with your wire. Again, keep it nice and tight. You see, I'm moving that hook. That's really tight, really bedding in. And you get to the front. Catch it off. And you could finish the fly here if you want, right? And on the smaller size, I generally would, right? But the bigger, the, the size 10, it's for a, you're going to fish it in a bigger wave, right? So a bit more hackle is nice. So I'm waxing my thread because I don't have much tie in space here. And I'm using a slightly longer. Hackles, just a wee bit bigger. Catch it on. The wax thread gives me grip. Also, that means that I'm winding on to a waxed base, which helps to stop things slipping, right? Because this is where people do find things a bit tricky, right? To not rush the eye or block your eye. So, fold this hackle as you go. Oops. If you do like I did and pull it out, just go back. Sometimes it happens. You 
You know, you just need to be patient. And I'll part my thread right at the eye. Now, as I was saying, this this can be that something that people find tricky. But just double this and wind, right? Fold it as you go. And just use the use your fingers to pull everything back and just go right down to the eye. I'm using up all that hackle. And then come across your thread. You keep everything tight. Release the hackle pliers. That's three wraps. And my eye's still nice and clear. And I'm just going to pull everything back. And then my wrap. My thread wraps are coming back up, away. Just make sure nothing's tangled up there. Away from the. There we go. Away from the hook eye. Right, I'm wrapping back towards the bend of the hook here. That gives me my wee short head. It's only about three thread turns. And then I'm just got to quick finish. No, I'm going to let in and go. I'm just going to come in. It's not that tip away. Before I varnish it, just cut that away. I'm going to get another rough with the Velcro. Draw out any trapped hackle fibres and bring the seal fur into the wing in that. The wee fibres are claret and brown, it's in that black mix. I'll run out as well so when the light catches them, it just kind of gives you a nice wee bit of, bit of colour. But there you go, that's a, a hot cake stimulator. It's a great top dropper, it's a great point fly as well. Well worth tying them up. As I say, any of the wet fly colours. We'll do for these. And there you go. Oh, that was useful, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did. Please remember to give me a thumbs up below and I'll see you for another video. Take lines guys, bye!